Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And today we're looking at Power BI tables, but more specifically, how we can make these um, more helpful by using custom column headers, adding explainer text, and just sort of making our tables look less like, you know, quote unquote, Power BI standard tables with a bit more of a web app like feel. So to go over the data, it's just YouTube data. I got off Kaggle and downloaded. Um, fairly standard, again, more like a web app feel with the, the bar, um, the segregated oval shape in there with the, the navigation and the settings cog. And then we just have, we wanted to show our top 10 YouTube channels by views. So that's why we've got that hard coded explainer narration piece at the bottom showing 10 out of 200 rows. Um, other elements like text filter for searching, um, a hoverable information tooltip and so on. But you can see when I hover over each piece of our column headers, for example, this gives the calculation that would be required for engagement. So channel likes, dislikes and comments over subscriber count. And we can hover and get that. Now, it's not something I've seen done much in the past, but given that, especially when we're viewing tabular data, quite often we're, we're looking with, uh, working with restricted space or real estate, so it's really helpful. So let me move into this next page and we're gonna strictly focus on how I construct this with the custom column headers um, and, and more of the, the rounded shape that we saw because there's a few layered components we need and there's a few different methods of approach to this. So we'll get into all that just now. The first thing that I actually want to do is get rid of that standard column text. Now you, you can't just remove it but the easiest way to do that is just to change the text color to the same as the background. So in my case, the text color is black, the background is white, so I can just change the text color to white. Now, there's a few core elements that we have here. Um, we have a standard rectangular shape and two rounded rectangles. Now this forms just the base layer to get that sort of um, rounded column header shape that we saw that isn't really synonymous with Power BI and the standard column headers. And then we have these buttons because they allow me to get that hover effect, whereas other, you know, shapes or methods may not. And that's just a blank button. So I can just insert button, blank button, and get to this point where we have all of these, these segregated pieces. And you can see, you can change when you go into the style and the format pane of the button, the text, whether it's default or, in hover, or on hover. So you can see as default, it's engagement and on hover, we get the conceptual calculation, um, which would help end users in a business situation as well, and um, figure out how we got to certain pieces without going into too much technical terms. So as I wanted more of a rounded column header shape, I've chosen to construct this in a certain way where we have that long rectangular strip. We can add on the two ends, which are rounded rectangles, because if we were to make one button on each side a rounded rectangle it wouldn't connect well with the rest of the rectangles and likewise if every button was to be a rounded rectangle it's not going to connect properly without gaps either way you could just piece together the squares square button shapes and make them equal size um, and align with the table text if you did want a more square shape but as you can see i have a more rounded shape in the example so we can piece together or start to piece this together now. So as with most of these things, there's some subtle layers that go on behind the scenes. I'm not going to be too pedantic with the sizing. Um, anyway, just because this is just sort of showing how it's built in the background. So we just need to select the relevant three shapes and then we can just manually drag these. So there we go. We've identified where the three shapes are within our selection pane, within the format tab, and we can just send these um, backwards. And all this does is just adjusting the layering order from the canvas. So um, it's still in the order that it would be shown on the screen above the table but it's gonna be behind these other elements that we add. And we just want to ensure that that is the case. So that's why I went in and, and manually did that. And now it's just a case of taking the buttons that we've created and aligning them as best as possible. So I'm just doing it by hand. 
um, you can go into the properties and compare the height versus the height of other elements and, and get a more exact fit but obviously some text size um, is quite different so it may look off in certain ways um, so we'll just do this by hand by now just as we're showing you how easy it is to make a more intuitive table so we'll add all the elements in and as you can see we still get the hover effect and we can fiddle about there and get things uh, to your liking essentially so as I said, you could click on an element, go into properties, and if you watch me click along, we can compare the height and how it differentiates there. Um, if you do want to be more specific and you likely would in a, in a slick professional solution. Um, so we're left with a nice table and you could tweak this an infinite amount of times, the other table elements, but this can give you nice ideas for explainers within your column titles and just making things a, best, a bit less like the norm. So as usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.